Do you remember the movie Clue and how they're explaining how the murder was done and who did it? All the characters are running around, pointing fingers, out of breath. Well, welcome to the Netflix original documentary, Carmel, Who Killed Maria Marta? It's a wild ride. Should you get on it though? This documentary series focuses on the circumstances around the death of Maria Marta Garcia Belsunz, which is one of the most controversial murder cases in Argentina. I gotta say from the start, this is a convoluted story. It's a little hard to follow sometimes, not in only the way that they present the facts, but just as everything then lays out. I mean, it is not a simple cut and dry type of case, which I think is also why it's still one of the most controversial cases in Argentina. I mean, there is a lot of extreme back and forth, a ton of the he said, she said, and you don't really get any straight answers from anybody. I always find it interesting when watching these true crime documentaries from countries outside of the US to look at their judicial system and their court system and see how it functions and how it differs from inside the US. Now inside the US, we have our own set of issues, but I gotta say ours is at least a little bit more organized or seemingly organized and laid out in a, in a proper way, I guess, I and mean, proper is not really the right term. I mean, a fair way, a way that just lays out all of the, all of the evidence. It's organized. Everybody has their opportunity to speak if it's relevant. And then a group of people makes a decision. In this, it's kind of a circus. First, let's just take the court scene. I mean, that is, everybody gets their opportunity, I guess, to talk. And at some points, people, who are witnesses are talking back and forth at each other. They're not even involved now with, with the prosecution or the defense or the judge. And so as an outsider, that's really bizarre, but it's also very interesting to watch. And the way the investigation is handled is head scratching at the very least. I mean, it is crazy to see how things, how people, how divisions, departments, whatever can be manipulated or prevented from doing certain aspects of their job just because of maybe where somebody lives. The murder takes place inside a gated community on a golf course. And so these people are fairly well off, all of the residents there. And it's crazy to see how doctors or ambulances or even police at one point aren't let in without the permission of the owners, the homeowners, to the front gate to let them in. I, that's so bizarre to me, and that, do, that doesn't make any sense. In my world, it would be, no, the police, the ambulance, the doctors, whoever needs to come in to provide first aid or investigative services, they just go in, at least into the community. Now, to enter in, especially if you're investigating, you need a warrant and all of that stuff. Now, on the investigative team also, not everybody felt like they were truly interested in getting to the actual truth. Sometimes they're just like, nah, we're just gonna wrap it up and go along, or we're just gonna take this person's word for what happened and we're good, let's go, moving on. I gotta say though that the prosecutor really looked and felt like he did care about justice. I didn't get the sense that he was bought off or that he had some other agenda. Now, maybe he did, but from the documentary, that's not really what came forward. Now, I talked about how convoluted and how confusing some of this is because you have a large portion of family, of Maria Marta's family, who are involved in some way, shape, or form, whether just by being there or coming over after she was found or during the investigation. I mean, it gets insane, it gets crazy, and then it just completely convolutes even more timelines and people's recollection of what happened when and what order it happened, and it, it utter chaos. And that's surrounding all of the circumstances of Maria Marta's death. I mean, we don't have any clear cut vision of really what happened. I mean, there are some timelines that you think are established by certain people or certain movements. There are other times where a, a witness was said to have been one place and they said they were another and now they're under suspicion based on their own recollection of where they were. Had they just accepted the other person's, the other witness's account, they would have been free and clear. And so I don't even get that part of it. Why would you lie or misdirect, mislead, even misremember, or even not, I don't know. I, I don't understand the logic of that part of it. And all of this comes through in the documentary. It's frustrating to watch at times because we're just like, wait, why would you do this? Or why would you say this? 
And we get so many interviews, which I absolutely love in this documentary. I mean, there are a ton of interviews from the family, from prosecutors, from news, and then there's a bunch of news footage, as well as video from the court inside the court itself. So I'm thankful for all of that footage because it really does build a great story. It's very entertaining to watch. It's very interesting. There are still even other things within the judicial system or within this case in particular where you have suspects that nobody follows up on or they just they start to follow up on them and then just completely ignore them. And I, you don't understand why because from the evidence laid out inside the documentary, ah, they might be somebody that you really should follow up on to at least completely go down all of those paths until you can completely rule them out. So from a true crime perspective, this is really interesting. It's really engaging and it's, it's just something to really draw you into. But it's also terribly horrifying at how it all goes down. Now this is four episodes, each of them are about an hour long, so it is a good chunk of time to invest in this, especially because it can be confusing and it can be frustrating, but it's also engaging and it's intriguing. I definitely recommend checking this out, especially if you're a true crime fan, and even though it is a very frustrating watch. Maybe as you watch, you can put together clues and see if you come to the same conclusion as the, the prosecutors or the investigators. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and some descriptions of violence. So are there any true crime documentaries that you're looking forward to that are coming out soon? Or if you've seen one recently that you could recommend, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.